So there was a question I got that uh, if you take a, let's take a cylinder for example, and just like we were doing in our other exercises, let's go ahead and drag a cylinder on our canvas, go into edit mode, make a poly mesh 3D, go down here to poly groups, group by normals, control shift tap, just this green one right here, this middle one. Um, let's go ahead and switch over to your skin shader two or another one that's brighter, and then geometry, modified topology, and delete hidden. So when we go through here and we're like, okay, I want to expand this in the Y direction, we turn on our L sim here, turn on our floor here, and we know that green is up and it's Y, and this is all world access stuff. So if I hit control D a couple times to get some resolution, maybe mask both ends of this, and we say, okay, expand in just the Y direction, run the simulation, it does that. It does a pretty good job and it expands uh, how we'd expect. Of course, X and Z is gonna give us a different result like so. So that's all fine and good, but what if this is on an axis or like in the case of sculpting an arm where it's like, you know, up here and kind of maybe back a little bit. So it's not on a world axis. So now if we go in here and we say, okay, now expand in the Y direction, um, it's just going to, you know, it's still going to expand in that Y direction, but then I'm going to get a different result. X and Z is going to be, you know, kind of all over the place. So what we can do is we can hit W and our gizmo is already you know, when we create any primitive, it's already going to go down the axis of that primitive. Now, if this is an arm and you don't, it's not a primitive or anything, and Gizmo is just like, I don't know, sitting at, you know, world, if we hold down Alt, just go to the middle here, uh, just sitting at your world zero or something, and you want to move it to the middle of the object, what you can do, and we don't even have any end caps, which you might not if you're doing a shirt. So what we're going to do is hold down Alt and just drag along that Shirt there, if we go into polyframe mode, you can actually see like, okay, we can actually drag. And as we're holding down alt and dragging, it'll go through and just kind of snap to that direction. And then we can actually go in here to unmash mesh center if we want that little teardrop icon. And now we're right down the middle of this and this axis is right down the middle. So let's say we want to, again, let's hold down control and we'll mask off either end of this. And let's go ahead and keep expand X, Y, Z on. So now if we go through here and we do a uniform uh, expand with BTC, which is our transpose cloth brush, you'll get this result. And you know what, let's go in here to subtool or let's go in here to geometry dynamic and we'll throw a little uh, post subdiv smooth on there. So again, we're doing a uniform con or scale inwards and we're getting that result. We can also do a uniform scale outwards and we'll get kind of a balloon result. If we do a Y direction, it'll compress in that direction. Now you can also, there's another alternative to this. If you want to do X and Z at the same time, it's like, okay, I can scale over here in the X and I can scale over here in the Z, but it's not ideal. You can do both of those direction at once. You can start scaling in the Y and then hold down Alt and that'll actually scale in the X and Z direction. So what you can do is you can kind of wiggle along that direction and it'll update Again, based on, since you're moving, it's gonna throw in those simulation iterations. And by the way, and just in case you didn't uh, put this together, if you go BTR, and you go in here, that's your regular transpose brush. You go to brush elasticity, there's no simulation iterations. Uh, if you go to BTC, it's the transpose brush with simulation iterations up to 100. Uh, of course, you can always dial this down if you wanted to say, you know what, um, I, I wanna control this more with my transpose line than I want to with actual simulation. You can go through here and see if that gives you a better result or a worse result or a more controllable result. You know, if you wanna re rely less on the simulation or you can go back in here and just, you know, crank that back up. So again, if we start scaling in the Y and then we hold down Alt, that'll scale in the X and Z direction. And then you can go back in here and you don't have to keep it with expand. We can always turn it back into like, we can start a deflate or a contract. Um, and then again, as we wiggle this, it'll go through and it'll wiggle down or we can just do a quick, I mean, this is, you know, you can also turn down the amount. So if we're contracting, it's like, you know, I just want to bring this in a little bit, you know, maybe wiggle in this direction, you'll get a slightly different result. So we can contract this down a little bit and then we can go back in here and run an expand. And if I just scale in the Y, that's gonna be different than if I just kind of wiggle the Y. It's gonna give me an X and Z, but you can also try and go through here and just limit it to a single axis. So if we expand it in the Y, again, that's still the cardinal world Y direction, uh, but it'll also give you a slightly different result. You can kind of see, you know, and actually going in here and like rotating actually seems to kind of give me those forms that kind of follow 
So we're going to try x. And again, if we want these moving down, we can just start scaling and hold down Alt. We can expand out and then exp uh, contract inwards, and that'll start driving uh, those wrinkles. And then you can rotate this around and see if that'll get you something that you want. But again, I can go in here, turn on expand XYZ, just scale in the Y and get that result. Scale in the X and get that result. Scale in the X and Z. And again, that's just starting to scale in the Y and then holding it down Alt. And you can scale in the Z, X and Z and get this result. And you don't always have to scale outwards. You can start scaling in the X and Z by holding down Alt and then go in. And then you'll just, again, just start, start wiggling and then you'll get those uh, compression results. Same thing with just scaling in the Y. Just kind of wiggle in and you'll get those results. And then, of course, you can give it a little twist if you want. So maybe try uh, using brush transpose cloth for an off-axis result.